a three-act task is an engaging way to get kids excited about math. And it's a great way to get them to question and to problem solve. Okay, so this morning, we're going to do a three-act task. So act one will be where you watch the video. And the first act is the part where you're just getting them excited. I want you to write down whatever you notice about the video, okay? And you have a spot on your form that you can write down whatever you notice that's happening in that video. Purple Partner, you are going to share something you notice. Then we'll watch it a second time and you'll write down any wonderings you have, okay? So Purple Partners, you're going to go first. Show something that you noticed. I noticed a man or a girl put some sugar or salt on, on the table or the counter and put in a bigger box. I also noticed dough on Mountain Dew on the table and that's it for my what, what I noticed. I wonder um, why the man put a pile of sugar on the table. I wonder if the person was trying to measure how much sugar was in the circle. So the purpose of a three-act task is to get students to really reason about mathematics and to problem solve, and it's engaging them in a real-life situation. So I'd like you just to share out either something you noticed or something that maybe your partner shared with you. So raise a quiet hand for something that you noticed about the video. Vivian. A lump of sugar. Okay, so you noticed a lump of something you thought was sugar. Thumbs up to Vivian if you had a similar wondering. Okay, and then a wondering that we had, Daniel. I wondered how much sugar does each can have? How much sugar does each can have was one of our wonderings. Okay. How many grams or ounces are of sugar in each can? During a three-act math task, the teacher role is really one of a facilitator. So I present the math story, I present the engaging movie, and then I just ask questions. What information do you need? What questions might you ask? How might you go about solving that now that you have that information? It's really about me questioning to get them thinking and to kind of keep them on track. And then in act two is where they start to question and they start to seek information and where they really are problem solving to get to an answer based on the information that they're able to get. I want you to be thinking about what do you think the main question will be? What do you think we're going to solve for today? What problem do you think we have that we're going to need to solve for? So I want you to think about that. I'm gonna give you 30 seconds to think of your own question. And then I'm gonna allow you a moment to share with your partner, okay? What I think for the main question is, how much grams or ounces of sugar are in the box of cans? I think uh, the main question to solve the answer is how many grams are in each soda can? All right, so here's our main question. So everyone, put this down on your paper. How many cups of sugar are in a case, that box of Mountain Dew? So write that down on your main question. I want you to start thinking about, if this is the question we're trying to solve, what information would you need? Go ahead and have a conversation with your partner. What information do you think you're going to need? I think the information you need to know is um, how much sugar are in the whole box in, of, in all the cans. Oh, so you think you need how much sugar is in each can. Okay. But do you think you need that information too? Yeah, okay, so let's write that in box five. So sometimes we just give the hints in act two, but today I chose to have the students question me. So if they wanted to know how much sugar was in one can of soda, instead of me just giving it, they had to come up with that question as a group and ask that. So what we're going to do today is in a moment, I'm going to give you the signal and you're going to get up and go to your groups and you're gonna take your paper because you and your partner have already brainstormed some more information that's needed. And then you're going to go to your group and talk to your group about, okay, if we know this is the information we need, what's a good question we could ask Mrs. Keto to get the clue? So if you ask me the right question, then I will give you the clue. Um, so they knew the problem was about Mountain Dew, they knew the problem was about sugar, but it got them to really think about, well, what information do I need to solve this? And they had to do that together and then come up with that question together. What's your question? How many cans of soda is in each box? Oh, okay. Here's how many cans of soda are in each box. Do you have a question? 
and then we have, and then we need to know how much sugar is in one hand, and then we figure out how much sugar is in one whole entire box, but first we need to figure out that. Okay, so here's how many grams of sugar are in each can. So three act tasks are done at the beginning of a chapter to kind of gauge what prior knowledge the students have that they're bringing to the chapter. I was going to add that up to see how much sugar was in the case. Okay. Kind of, so pretty much adding up all of the sugar to the can. From each can, okay. How will you know how many times to add it? How did you know that though? Usually. So you have some prior knowledge that tells you that. My mom has Okay. <laughs> okay, so I'm going to give you a clue that's going to help you decide whether or not you're correct. Is your hypothesis correct? Yes. Okay. They can also be done in the middle of a chapter to kind of see how students are applying concepts and skills that they've been taught along the way through the chapter and see how they're able to apply them. So the question is, how many grams of sugar are in a cup? Oh, so you found out how many grams were in the case, but now you need a conversion? Okay. It's really a time for the students to have those math conversations with each other and to reason through a problem and to kind of use all the skills and tools that they have and apply it to a real life situation. How many of you asked a question and figured out how many cans were in one box? All right, almost all of our groups. How many cans were in one box, everyone? Twelve. Okay. How many of you asked a question to figure out how many, how much sugar was in one can? Okay, some of our groups. And how much sugar was in one can? 46. 46 grams. So the clue I gave you was in grams. However, what is the question that we're solving for? What is the question? How many cups of sugar? So Daniel, what question did your group ask to get some more information? How many grams of sugar is Oh, what question did Daniel ask? How many grams of sugar? Grams of sugar, grams of sugar, in, in, sugar, in, sugar in one cup. So I'm going to bring this around and give you some more information. This will tell you that in one can of soda, there's about one fifth cups of sugar. We may need to add um, one fifth of a cup of one fifth of a cup of sugar of Mountain Dew twelve times and two fifths. So it's gonna be it's gonna be one. So yeah, it's gonna be so one and one. Three and two fifths. If I have one fifth. Cup of sugar in one can. Yeah, two tea. If I have two cups of, if I have two cans, how many cups of sugar? Two tenths. You think two tenths? What I do you think? think? Two tenths. You think think two tenths? What do you think? Because, because one. Because you one think it's two tenths? Fractions. Okay, so I would like you to model this for me. No, I love the I love the thinking that's happening. Don't erase that. That's awesome. But what tool could you use to model it? So you have twelve soda cans. Okay, so let's just stick with what we got going on here. Mm -hmm. So this right here is representing one-fifth a cup of sugar in 12 different cans, yes? Okay, so what do we know about fractions? Can, we count, can you count fractions with me? Count one-fifth, one two-fifth, three-fifth, four-fifth, five-fifth, six-fifths, seven-fifths, eight-fifths, nine-fifths, ten-fifths, eleven-fifths, twelve-fifths. So how many cups of sugar? Twelve fifth. Twelve fifth cups of sugar. Agree? 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 So how many cups of sugar are in a twelve pack of Mountain Dew? Twelve fifth cup of sugar. Will you write that next to your work up there? Yes. Do you know something about those fractions? So this is one whole cup? One whole cup. So use that thinking and continue thinking. And then Act 3 is the reveal. It's where students share different strategies as to how they approach the problem. And then they start to make connections between their strategy and another group's strategy. And then after that, then the answer is revealed. So our question was how many cups of sugar are in a case of Mountain Dew? I like to show you how one group modeled their thinking. What do those numbers represent? Maya, what fraction do you see up there? One fifth. One fifth. 
I, I see one fifth. Anybody else see one fifth? Okay. Yeah. I see one fifth. What do we think that one fifth might represent from our problem? Erin, you have an idea? All the cans that we have in one case. Okay, so you think each of those tiles, you, how many tiles did you see? Twelve. Twelve. And so you're thinking that's probably representing the 12 cans of soda in a case. Okay, I could reason that with you. Yeah. All right. So Maya sees a one fifth. Erin sees that there are 12 tiles up there, thinking that's probably representing what's happening in a case. Okay. What do you think this group's next step might have been? You will add them up. They might add up. And what would they get if they added all of that up? 12 fifths. So 12 fifths cups of sugar in a box is what you were thinking. Okay. But here is what another group did. Okay. So look at what this group did. Do you think that this is kind of representing what Gina was just talking about? Yeah. It's adding the fifths, right? Yeah? Do we agree? Yeah. And did they get the same answer? Yeah. They got 12 fifths as well, right? So this is kind of the number, the arithmetic of what we were doing with this model here. So this group did the same thing. They started with 1 fifth. They added their one-fifths, they got to 12 fifths, and then they went a little bit farther. All right? So they took their 12 fifths and they got to two and two fifths. And so, Nisaiah, I think this is where you were going to take us. So what did you notice about fifths, Nisaiah? So what I was saying was when we were counting the um, fraction tiles with you, and once we got to five fifths, we saw that that was all whole. Oh, stop. Turn and talk to your partner. What do you think about that information? They wrote it down, just like our group before, with the, the arithmetic, right? And what they started to do is they started to circle things. So they're circling five fractions. Why do you think they circled every five fractions? Vivian, why do you think they did that? So Vivian's saying that 5 fifths equals 1 whole. Agree? Disagree? Agree. OK. So what they did was every 1, 2, 1 fifth, 2 fifths, 3 fifths, 4 fifths, 5 fifths, 1 whole. But then they noticed they had some more. So they tried again. 1 fifth, 2 fifths, 3 fifths, 4 fifths, 5 fifths, 2 whole. But were they done? No. No, because they still had what? They still had 2 fifths left. So what's their answer? Two and two fifths. Pretty much know the answer. So here's the act three reveal. And it's kind of showing us what we were thinking, right? You finished all three acts. Good job. Good job, I feel like the three act task is one way for us to really see inside student learning and to really hear about how they're reasoning with mathematics. And oftentimes we can walk by and look at a student's paper and make this assumption that they may or may not get it. And without being able to question them, we may have a false understanding of their learning. But during a three act task, when I have the moment to squat down and listen to a group or stand at a board with some students and say, you know, talk to me about what you've put up here and really hear about how they've made sense of the problem and are reasoning through it, it just gives me so much more information than a completed paper would.